morning in our gospel lesson, Jesus declares that all the Father has is mine. It is a message about fatherhood and inheritance. It is also a message about teamwork. Fathers have been known to be the head of the household, the go-to guy to fix things, and the strong male figure that children look up to so they can feel safe. Donald Smith has discovered a very important list that has far-reaching implications for interpersonal communications between fathers and their families. Much has been written over the years about the need for honest, clear, and consistent communication in family life. For lack of a better term, he calls it the Father's Day Top Ten List of Things You've Been Itching to Say for Years Now. Here it is, number 10. Whenever possible, please say whatever you have to say during commercials. <laughs> number 9. Shopping is not a sport, and no, we are never going to think of it that way. <laughs> number 8. Sunday equals sports. It's like the full moon or the changing of the tides. Let it be. Number 7. Yes and no are perfectly acceptable answers to almost every question. <laughs> Number six, check your oil. Please check your oil. <laughs> Number five, this one really gets me. Anything we said six months ago is inadmissible in an argument. <laughs> Null and void after seven days. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Number four. I like this one too. If something we said can be interpreted two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, we meant the other one. <laughs> Time with family. 
90% say becoming a father made them want to be a better person and role model for their kids, while 75% feel a weight of responsibility now that they didn't before. Paul Harvey, in a column entitled, What Are Fathers Made Of?, has noticed the following about fathers, quote, A father is a thing that is forced to endure childbirth without an anesthetic. A father is a thing that growls when it feels good and laughs very loud when it's scared half to death. A father never feels entirely worthy of the worship in a child's eyes. He's never quite the hero his daughter thinks, never quite the man his son believes him to be, and this worries him sometimes. So he works too hard to try and smooth the rough places in the road for those of his own who will follow him. A father is a thing that gets very angry when the first school grades aren't so good as he thinks they should be. He scolds his son, though he knows it's the teacher's fault. <laughs> Fathers are what give daughters away to other men who aren't nearly good enough so they can have grandchildren who are smarter than anybody's. <laughs> Fathers make bets with insurance companies about who will live the longest. Though they know the odds, they keep right on betting, and one day they lose. I don't know where fathers go when they die, but I have an idea that after a good rest, wherever it is, he won't be happy unless there's work to do. He won't just sit in a cloud and wait for the girl he loved and the children she bore. He'll be busy there too, repairing the stairs, oiling the gates, improving the streets, and smoothing the way. Give me a moment, please. <laughs> <coughs> The Bible has some important things to say about fathers and father. Among them are Ephesians 6, 4, and now a word to you fathers. Don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. And Colossians 3, 21, fathers don't aggravate your children. If you do, they will become discouraged and quit trying. These passages remind me of the need for firmness and grace, guidance and permission giving, discipline and love, disagreement and respect. But there is another passage, this one in John's Gospel, which has much to teach us about fathers and fathering. It is found in chapter 17. It is Jesus' prayer to God the Father prior to his arrest and subsequent crucifixion. There is much more to this chapter than we can possibly examine this morning, and it is worthy of a series of itself. But I want to read the opening five verses of Scripture from the perspective of a father and son conversation. As you listen to this familiar passage, what do you hear and sense regarding their relationship? Quote, When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone in all the earth. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. And now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. End quote. I'm not going to ask you to answer out loud, but just in your spirit, think about what you've heard and what you see happening. What you feel in this brief passage. Here are a few thoughts. First of all, we see intimacy in the relationship. If we would read chapters 14 through 16, we would see closeness between Jesus and his Father. If we would look at the book of Genesis, we would read in the 26th verse of chapter 1, Then God said, Let us make people in our image to be like ourselves. This us in verse 26 is God the Father, 
God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The possible dialogue that, they, that may have occurred between the Godhead about creation is intriguing. God the Son and God the Father have always been close. Jesus makes that clear a little further down in verse 21 when he says, My prayer for all of them is that they may be one, just as you and I are one, Father. End quote. Dads, being close to your kids is wonderful. Laughing with them, clowning around with them, even crying with them is wonderful. Dads have the incredible ability to relate to their kids in meaningful ways, just as Jesus reveals in this passage. The second thing we, mo we notice in John 17, 1 to 5, is teamwork. Jesus notes in verse 4, I brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you told me to do. Jesus obeyed the Father and came to earth to die on our behalf so that we might be forgiven of our sins and released from their bondage. But it required teamwork. God the Father had a role to play. God the Son had a place on the team. And as Jesus reveals in the final moments prior to his death and resurrection, God the Holy Spirit will have a place in the Father's plan as well. One of the lessons of life is that working together as a team can provide some incredible opportunities for growth and development, even though working as a team is hard at times. In the words of Jim Kane, quote, Dads, our biggest fans, also make up our biggest team, our families. End quote. The third thing I want to point out about the Trinity is love and respect. In verse 2 of John 17, Jesus says, Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. To glorify someone is to hold them in high regard, to see them as larger than life. What Jesus is asking for here is not an egotistical thing. What he is asking for is that his father will honor him so that he can honor his father. This is a statement about love and respect. Dads who have found the key to becoming good fathers will see the love and the respect for their kids and family returning to them. Because of what Jesus went on to do after this prayer, the family of God, the church, came into existence as we celebrated last Sunday on Pentecost. And in the later books of the New Testament, these books that follow this pericope, of scripture, we see and hear the importance that closeness, teamwork, love, and respect play in the life of the church. One of the ways that we do this is by sharing our stories in ways that strengthen our faith. And this morning I've asked Glenn and Shirley to share some of the lessons they have learned from their father. How many of you remember my dad? Fair number, okay. Um, you may learn a little bit something different about him today. Um, Daddy was a quiet man who led by example. Whether he was at home or at work, he gave everything he did his all. He never shied away from hard work. In fact, he seemed to embrace it. He was a laborer by trade and worked in a foundry all his life getting up before dawn and putting in very long days. I see daddy's work ethic in our three children. When I say to our son Michael, you work too hard and you put in too many hours, you need to take it a little easy. His reply is always the same. Well, who do you think I get that from? <laughs> when daddy got home from work, after a long day, instead of sitting down to relax or watch TV, he would be outside mowing or trimming the lawn or working in his truck patch. He always planted a large garden which produced way more than a family of four could ever eat. 
And I believe he did this intentionally so that he could share the abundance with family and friends. His garden was always neatly cultivated and 99% weed free. He grew tomatoes and red beets, without exaggeration, the size of softballs. Our daughter Sherry and I got our love of gardening from Daddy, and Sherry often says, Pop Pop made sure he gave me his green thumb. And yes, she and I both do our best to try to have weed free gardens like his. Daddy was active in the church. Uh, his parents, my grandparents, belonged to the Mennonite church. And late in his teens, Daddy decided that he wasn't sure that he wanted to follow in that tradition and remain in the Mennonite church. At that time, his neighbor, who lived two doors away, and happened to be my father-in-law, Glenn's dad, Linford Snyder, invited him to come to Heidelberg, which he did, and he stayed here and became a very faithful member of this church. He gave of himself to this church throughout his entire life, serving on the building fund committee, which helped to raise the money to build this building. He was a member of Consistory. He and Mom uh, helped out with youth group when I was in my teens, and he was the six-foot tenor that sang in the choir for as long as I can remember. Daddy always made time for his family, even when he was exhausted from working all day. He would spend time in the evenings with my sister and me. I personally was happiest when I could wiggle my way out of helping mom with the supper dishes and go outside and help daddy and do whatever he was doing, be it gardening, picking apples, picking pears, cleaning out the in-ground fish pond, whatever. As long as I was out there with him, I was happy. We enjoyed board games, card games, and marbles. And many a night, daddy would doze off right in the middle of the game. And when his grandchildren came to visit, he spent time playing with them. Even though he was exhausted from his day's work, it never kept him from sharing his time with him. Our children have fond memories of Pop Pop, pushing them on the big swing he made in the backyard, taking them for a bicycle ride, or giving them a ride on the John Deere tractor. Karen remembers a special bicycle ride with Pop Pop. Daddy rode my old bike, and it had a wire basket on the front handlebars. A lot of you remember them. And he put Karen in the wire basket, sat her in the wire basket on the front handlebars, and took her down the road to pick mint tea. And then there were the games of lawn jarts and parcheesi. Daddy was a master parcheesi player. It was an ongoing challenge for our children to try to beat Pop Pop at his favorite game, but they were seldom successful at that. Daddy remained the champ. He was a man who helped others and put the needs of others before his own. From sharing produce from his garden, to bringing my grandfather home from work every day, to helping family members who were struggling, he made a difference in people's lives. I'm so fortunate that I had an awesome dad, and I also have a wonderful <coughs> mother who stood by his side. Together they made my sister and I who we are today. I'm so very blessed to have parents who gave me a happy home, lots of love, and so many wonderful memories to treasure. Father Day, Father's Day, a time to reflect on my father's influence on my life. Hard worker. My father was a hard worker all his life. I believe that ethic passed on from his, came from his mother. My grandmother lost her husband at a young age and raised five children on her own. My father was the youngest of five. During the Depression years, everyone had to pitch in and help the family in any way possible. In the summers, my dad, as a youth, worked at the Hatfield Fairgrounds, which was right in their backyard, and cleaned stables and walked racehorses after they finished the race. Dad started working at an early age. One of Dad's first jobs was working as a teller at the Hatfield National Bank. Through this position, he was a recipient of a scholarship to Pierce Business School in Philadelphia. This was a one year attending, this one year attending Pierce, in his words, set him up for life. Throughout his lifetime, he owned a gas station in Southerton, bought a chicken farm and raised thousands of chickens, 
and became an insurance agent. In his seven years as a nationwide agent, Dad didn't know the meaning of eight to five. He was available to his insurers 24 seven and assisted them whenever the hour of the day or night or what week. Thank for his blessing, thankful for blessings. Dad was not ashamed to express his thanks for the blessings he received. He would express his thanks for good health, which he enjoyed throughout his lifetime. He was also thankful to Pierce College and continued to be an alumni who supported this college in appreciation for all the school had given to him. He started a scholarship fund at Pierce, which is still helping college students today. He appreciated all the Lord provided to him. Christianity. Heidelberg Church was an important part of Grandmom's life and was passed down to Dad. Dad followed in her footsteps and became an active member and lifelong member of this church. He served in consistory, sang bass in the choir, became the church historian, and was church choir director for many years. Back in the 30s, he and Mother joined a group of young people from Heidelberg Church and Hatfield High School and formed an octet that sang in churches throughout eastern Pennsylvania. Dad also played a clarinet, which we didn't very often hear him play, but he played that in the Hatfield High School band. His, mo his and Mother's love for music rubbed off on me. Dad always looked for ways to help. He was instrumental in the purchase of this property, the new church of Heidelberg, the new property and home of Heidelberg Church. Being an active member of the church was important to Dad. He passed on this love of being able to do things for Heidelberg Church to, to me. The apple really didn't fall far from the tree. Good parents set a high standards for the children to follow. My dad's love for church, music, family, and helping others to set good examples for my sisters, brothers, and me. That was powerful. Powerful to see the influence of wonderful parents, wonderful dads, and the implications for the church. The joy of service, the joy of hard work, the joy of teamwork. Thank you very much for sharing. Amen.